back to the show. Now, my next guest was part of one of the biggest boy bands in the 90s. The band stood out for their rough edge and tore up the charts with a number of hits for several years. Now, the band is still together to this day with a few new faces at the forefront. One face, however, that you may be familiar with and is still there going strong is original band member Terry Coldwell. But before we chat to Terry, let's take a look at some of their biggest hits. Terry Caldwell, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Tunes, classics, the classics. Aren't they classics? Because when you look at the bad boy band image you had, it was kind of the antithesis to take that. Um, but the music you made was absolutely amazing. And they're classics and they're still around today. I mean, how did the band come around in the first place? Uh, the band came around, um, I, I kind of, I got in the band through being a dancer. And I loved dancing when I was younger. In the 80s, I was great dancing. And, yeah, so Tony kind of knew my sister because she's a few years older than me. And he, he approached me, he knew I could dance, and he said, do you want to be in a band? I went round to Brian's house. I said, oh, I'm in a band, Brian. He went, what? Did you ask if I could be in a band? And uh, I said, uh, no, because <laughs> I don't really know Tony that well at the time. But if you come around the corner with me, he's still there. We'll ask him together. And that's kind of what happened. Tony said yes, and then the rest was history. It's so different to the way bands are made now. They're all made on um, reality shows and things like that. But that was literally a few lads who lived around the same area got together, and, the re and that's what happened. Yeah, it's crazy now. Like, you can self-promote yourself. You can just be in your bedroom, you know, and you get them hits on YouTube or whatever. Next minute, record companies all the labels are looking at how many hits you got on youtube how many followers you got on instagram facebook etc uh yes yeah, a different world now yeah totally. but uh, the impact of the band even to this day i mean you every christmas without fail your face pops up <laughs> on every television around the world because of, of the the hit stay which was a massive one for you one of many massive hits um but you were so famous. I mean, you, you and the, the fame happened relatively quickly. Um, how did you deal with that as a band and as an individual? Um, I'd say the, how, I, how I dealt with it personally, um, you know, the first three years we was working seven days a week, basically. So you didn't kind of really see how big it got until you started doing concerts and stuff like that, putting on your own concerts. Um, but I've, I've kind of always kept my feet on the ground. It might have been different for Tony and Brian at the time because they were the lead singers. So they got kind of most of the attention. So it might have been slightly different for them. But, yeah, just just being normal, really. I had been jobs when I was at school. My dad always made me work. I had early morning paper hands. I worked in fruit shops after school. I had a Saturday job. I had a Sunday job. Um, so maybe the work ethic that my, get, my dad gave, gave me... Maybe that changed um, the way. I always saw it as a job. I saw it as a brilliant job. I felt I was blessed to have the job. And, yeah, it, it's hard, though. You know, you're on the road all the time. You're living out of a suitcase. You, you bicker over little things. Um, yeah, it's... But I think everyone, when you're in a band, everyone takes it differently in the band. Um. But there were so many amazing gigs you had. You mentioned that you didn't realise how big you were until you actually started playing concerts. What would have been the highlight for you of that golden era? Uh, the golden era. Do you know what? I've had a couple of 
nice, really big highlights. One was in the golden era and one was only a couple of years ago. Uh, I'd say in the 90s, we done a show in Red Square in Moscow, sponsored wow. by Pepsi Cola. We also done a Pepsi advert after that. Um, you know, when uh, everyone was doing Pepsi adverts in the 90s, Michael Jackson and all the big names. Um, but yeah, a million people turned up. It was the rain was it was like torrential rain, and Red Square was back to back with people, and every road coming off Red Square was back to back with people. And to, as far as the eye could see, it was amazing. A couple of years ago, we done a show in Berlin. Uh, they were celebrating 30 years of the Berlin Wall coming down, and it was at the gate, gates of Berlin Wall. And uh, yet again. They estimate over a million people turning up as it was a mild winter. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, it, you know, you never forget them sort of gigs. They're, they're, you know, mate, I just I used to be a builder. So, you know, from being a builder to a pop star, it's, it's, it's a dream come true. And when you, when you actually think about it, it blows the mind. A million people in the Red Square, a million people at the Brandenburg Gates, two of the most iconic places in the world to be. You gigged there Millions of people saw you, and then I mean, the 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 impact is absolutely massive, and it must it must feel so you must feel so privileged to look back on those days and had them. But with, with the highs of, of that experience, also comes lows because it's not always easy being in a band and being a, a pop singer uh, with that degree of success. Was there any time that you just went, "No, I, I can't do this anymore. It's getting too hard." Um. No, it was never kind of like that for me. I always wanted to do it. I, I love, I love traveling. It, the traveling side of it is, is parts of it. Um, but I, I just love it. I love music. I love dancing. I love creating music. I produce music. I uh, write music. Um, and you know, some of it's been taught. I've taught myself as the as the careers kind of expanded over the years. Um, but yeah, there has been low points. There's been points where the band has split up and, you know, what am I going to do? I've, I've, there's been points where I've had money, I haven't had money um, due to divorces and stuff. Um, but, you know, you pick yourself up and, and you've just got to drive yourself forward. And yeah. it, it, I think, you know, for me, I love doing it. So that's what I've done. I pick myself up each time. I dust myself off. And I, and I drive myself forward. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. It's, if you love what you do, just keep going at it. Um, now, you're Terry, you're one of the original band members. You're still going strong with the band, even though it's had various different formations. But for the last year in lockdown, in COVID, you had so many concerts cancelled. It must have been pretty devastating. Yes, yes. We, we've, um, me and Robbie in the band, we've, we've basically built the band up over the last eight years. And last year was actually going to be our busiest year. Um, we, we had, we had uh, over 100 shows booked in last year. And yet they all got cancelled. So, yeah, it was a bit tough. But, you know, it's, it's great spending time with the family. Um, one of my daughters has got three holes in the heart and, and only one functioning kidney. So it's great to spend quality time with her. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been tough, but it also it's given me the chance to be creative again. I've been in the studio, I've wrote new tracks um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, you know, you've got to try and see the good out of a bad situation. Yeah, and not only that, you're, you're venturing into the movie world. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm in a film called um, The Blag, uh, which we started filming before COVID, but obviously we had to stop filming. So hopefully... We'll be back on track with that. It's a true story based about the music industry, about these two guys that I know in the 80s. Uh, Jimmy from 911, he, he plays my co-lead in it, uh, my partner. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's good. Yeah. But we released some new material as well last year, which done really well. Um, a strip got to number five in the club charts, and it's done over half a million streams and still streaming really strong every day. Um, yeah, we released that with a little small independent called Select Talk. And um, yeah, it's doing really well. That's off the back of no publicity, really, apart from me using my, my own social media. Yeah. So yeah, no, very happy, very happy at the minute. And your fans will be very happy as well because you're going back on the road once it's, it's safe to do so. Not only you're gigging in the UK, you'll be coming to Ireland as well. Finally, tell us about that. Yeah. 
Yes, we are. We've got lots of shows booked in this year. Hopefully, we won't go into another lockdown. Um, but next year, we're doing a, a theatre tour next Christmas, starting in November. And, um, yep, I think one of the shows is in Ireland as well. Come down, show some support. It's going to be an amazing tour. tour. There's, there's effects and video walls and everything. So, yes, very exciting, very exciting times. Well, Terry, I hope to see you there. Fingers crossed we have no more lockdowns and we can all all gig in peace again. Listen, it's been an absolute joy yes, talking to you. Yes, you'll have to come down, Elaine. We you will, we will. Down. We'll have a pint after the show. <laughs> have a bit of a laugh. Listen, Definitely. thanks. Definitely, pint of Guinness. <laughs> thanks a million for chatting to us today. Stay safe, you and your family. Thank you, Elaine. Take care. Have a good day. Now we'll take a quick break, but when we come back, we're celebrating World Africa Day for this week's Travel Tuesday. You do not want to miss it.